Last time I was at the radio station with my dad, we talked about storage. I asked him how they store their files, and he said they have two terabytes of network storage, and it's more than 90% full. They need a storage intervention. I mean, I'm over here with my 48 terabyte all SSD Raspberry Pi NAS. Surely I can help my dad, right? So I asked my friends at Asus Store, and they sent me this. It's a 1U rack server, the Locker Store 4RS, and I have to admit, I'm a bit jealous. In my little home lab, I run two desktop NASes. Between them, I have enough storage for two synchronized local copies of all my YouTube footage, plus an offline weekly archive on Amazon Glacier. I have a whole video where I talk about my 3 to one backup plan over on my main channel, so go check that out. With ransomware attacks on the rise, having reliable storage and backups is a basic requirement for any business, no matter how small. And a lot of the times, a NAS like this is the best way to get started. So I'm going to quickly run through the server specs, then we'll go install it at the station. The 4RS uses a custom motherboard to connect an Intel Atom quad-core CPU to four SATA hot swap bays. On the back, it has two built-in gigabit ports, two 2.5 gig ports, and you can even add in 10 gigs with a PCI Express card in this PCIe Gen 3 by 4 slot. The server comes with 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, though it has three more slots, and you can upgrade the thing all the way to 128 gigs. That expansion's a nice feather in the cap for this server compared to its closest competitor, the Synology Rackstation RS820 Plus, which tops out at only 18 gigs. The built-in ADM software has a ton of features perfect for the radio station, like support for virtual machine disks, Docker, and one-touch backups. It's a full-on server, too, complete with fans that could double as jet turbines at full blast. Luckily, those fans don't get that loud in normal operation, <laughs> otherwise this thing wouldn't be a great fit for a radio studio. This unit has one power supply, but Asus Store also sells a version with two for redundancy, and there's also a 12-bay version if you need a ton of extra capacity. Heck, if you can fork over the money, they have pro versions with Xeon processors, ECC RAM, and even more drive bays. But this unit is a perfect upgrade for the radio station. They have the rack space for it, and I'm going to install these four Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives in it for 16 terabytes of raw storage capacity. So let's take this thing over to the station. I figure since it's on the way, I might as well indulge. There you, go. you can take the bag off of there. All right. It's a little surprise. Food? Uh, you'll see. Alrighty. All right. So we got four oh, yes. Iron Wolf NAS drives, four terabytes. Great. So you can set those aside for now because we got to yeah. install them. And then there's an accessory box here that we'll need to go through in a bit to put everything together. And this is the Locker Store 4 RS. Nice. There's the front. There it is. So. Uh, we don't need to take the top off or anything. It has 8 gigs of RAM in it, but you can upgrade it to 128 gigs if you ever need to. It also has a slot back here for a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, and there might be some other things you could put in there in the future if you ever need to expand. But looking around at the back side, it does have two 2.5 gig nice. and two 1 gig Ethernet, plus four USB 3 uh, ports. First things first, it looks like we're going to need to put the rack ears on, so yeah, let's get started with that. There's one, and here's a rack ear, and we've got uh, three that are going to go on the side with some nice holes. Perfect. And then uh, three bags of screws. The one with only six is the one I'm guessing because you've got two rack ears, three apiece. So I'll pull this around and get this near the edge so I have a chance to drop the screws on the floor. <laughs> Went right in there. Beautifully engineered. We love that. Tighten them up. It's like 47 newton tons or something, Georgia. Yeah. Well, whatever they expect and expect. Is newton tons a uh, official <laughs> unit of measurement? Yeah, until I can make one up. I know that they sell a rail kit for this thing, but I looked and it's like 150 bucks, and we don't have it on hand. So Oops. what is your what is going to be your solution? Because it looks like um, I don't yeah, this know. Is I don't long... think you can support this thing on those two. Screws yeah, the two alone. screws in the front. No, it's meant to have a rail kit or be in installed on a sliding shelf or something. Uh, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount in the back of the rack, I'm going to mount upside down a 1RU shelf to support the back and then these will support the front. We're going to see how that feels and uh, go with it, I hope. 
So what do you say we put the drives in? I now? think that's a good uh, good next step. A little, well, a little extra weight to carry. Uh, maybe, maybe we put the drives in the trays, and then we can put the trays in that's, once it's in the rack. That's true. That's a good compromise. So yeah. pop that open, tray one, pop, beautiful. And these trays are all metal with uh, plastic kind of facades. Yeah, so that's going to go like that. I'm guessing this is 16, and that's not. Uh, they should uh, both have 16. I think there's a kit wait. for oh, to her size. Yeah, these are just smaller for yeah. the two point tiny drives. Less so if you ever wanted to upgrade to SSDs, yeah, I could tell by the weight. Kind of jumped out of that bag there, Jeffrey. <laughs> All right. So here, I'm going to take this on the side. How many different techniques do you think people have for putting screws in? Some people probably <laughs> don't put the screws in. Uh, that's true too. Push. The crazy thing is you could grab a hard drive from like 30 or 40 years ago, which you probably have one in this building. <laughs> I probably do. And it would fit right in there, although it might be IDE or SCSI or some other interface. I'll show you one other thing. You want to see this real quick? Sure. Yes. This is something that's kind of cool. The other drives we used to use, this was generation three or four. Look at that, floppy. I bet it still works too. Anyone did the satisfying sound of a floppy? Do you remember that? <laughs> if, I had, if I could find one, I would play one in there. <laughs> You remember guys used to write software to make sounds? Yeah, oh, there's yeah. uh, so what is it? The device orchestra on YouTube. Oh yeah, is one of them. Yeah. He does like uh, tooth toothbrushes and yep. and uh, typewriters and things. But there's also a guy I forget the channel. He has like 80 floppy drives and a scanner and a dot matrix printer and all that kind of stuff. So not a ratcheting screwdriver. Oh come on. I only give them three, and then the fourth one, if it doesn't go, I throw the hard drive hmm. across the room. Don't know if I would do that with these. They're easily replaceable. See, you let them know that. Look at that. Yep. I was only slightly nervous about the uh, the fan noise inside of there, but I realized you have other things in there that are way louder. So yes, I, I think do. we're going to have a problem. Well, that UPS at the bottom, you know, those donated UPS thing. <laughs> that's the uh, I donate got the good coin. One. Yeah, you got the one that's the quietest of all of them. <laughs> All right, let's get it in the racks. Take this baby, put this in here, go through. And of course, since I'm holding the camera, I get to let you do all the work here. <laughs> get it to slide in and catch the shelf back there. And then line it right up, the hole right there on the front. There it goes. There's that one. All right, they both look the same. All right, let's get those hard drives installed. All right, hard drives, carry them all at once? No, uh, maybe I don't know not. About that. I think I can take my time. Shove them in here. One. It's very satisfying, Jeff. Everything here is new. <laughs> yes. A rare treat. Two. Three. Okay, Beautiful. and the most important part, <clears throat> you want to do the honors of peeling. Oh, I love that. It's a little thing here to grab here, isn't there? It's not made for my fingers. fingers. And then your eyes get old, Jeff. Don't do that. Avoid <laughs> that one. You need to go get your reading glasses. Yeah, I need to get my reading glasses. I see the tip <laughs> here. I got it going here. It's still satisfying. There Look at this. That is satisfying. Never gets old. You know? All right, so wait a minute, show you how this cable has been run to our super duper one gig switch here. And uh, run around, out, back. I'm gonna plug it in the one gig port. Uh, should I do numerically? One, two, three, <laughs> or just go at the bottom? Doesn't with matter too much. Okay, says the youngster. <laughs> okay, all right, so this guy, I'll probably go, I'll be able to start over there and see that. Plug in, go off the side, come over, and probably hit there. There's a million ways to do power cords, Mike Waldman. <laughs> I don't know if we need to call the people out on this. Oh, okay, but he is, he was the best. He is the cable management king. <laughs> he was the king. I'm gonna come around here and tuck this baby right in there. And is this power strip connected to a UPS? That's connected to the UPS at the bottom, the noisemaker. 
46 decibels. My office is 32. You know, you can yeah, well, you have to stand that. next to my This is a radio uh, studio. Yes. <laughs> yes. Although uh, you can close this door and that helps quite a bit. That, that would be true. All right. Well, All right. So you ready? Yeah. The pleasure of turning it on. This looks like the power button. Universal yep. power symbol. Oh, not too bad. And now look at that. That's it. And it looks like it's safe to work here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can hear the hard drive spinning up. So now you're more familiar with this than I am. What is it doing? We're spinning up the drive. So yeah, it, uh, it does a staggered spin up. Oh, so I it doesn't that. do a big power surge. Saw so I think that. it usually does two then two. I don't know if it, that's the order it did it. Now I see in network indicators here. So this looks like hard drive spin up. Yeah, the hard drive is blinking. That's kind of like here. set me up, please. So yeah, we'll need to do that from a computer. Gotcha. All right, so uh, there's a few different ways you can find this thing on your network once you have it set up. Um, you could scan it with Thing or with uh, some network utility. Asus Store actually makes a thing called Asus Store Control Center, which I popped on here, and it looks on your network for any Asus Store devices, and it found the one here. You could also just go to this IP address in your web browser, and I think it's port 8001. Um, but if you go here, you can open it straight up from the Control Center, which is convenient. And I will accept the certificate because it has a self-signed. And this is the initial setup wizard. So at this point, we have a few decisions that we need to make. We need to figure out um, what RAID level we want to use, uh, how we want to set up the drives, if we want to have two volumes or one volume, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the setup wizard is asking for a RAID level. Have you thought about uh, what you want to do for this? Uh, highest one ever. <laughs> No, that's, that's not how you. That's I know not how RAID works. <laughs> I know. What do you think, though? What What's so, your personal preference? So, I mean, this is for the radio station. You definitely want stability, and um, you'd probably want to have some amount of performance. Like right now, I, I know that you have RAID one, right, in the mm -hmm. in the current storage server. Yes. So, obviously, each RAID level has its trade-offs. With RAID one and RAID ten, uh, there's mirrored redundancy. So, for each disk, there's a complete mirror copy of it. So those offer some good things like you'll you'll be able to lose half of your drives as long as it's the right half of your drives and you'll still be good and it's faster because the the computer doesn't have to do as much parity calculation as you would in raid 5 raid 6 um, raid levels like that you would never do raid well not never but you would almost never do raid 0 because if any drive fails your entire yeah. system is gone all your data is gone also uh, this asus store has btrfs which is a newer kind of storage technology um, and there's also ZFS, which this, this particular NAS doesn't support. Those two are a little bit more advanced. You can do some more things with them. And a lot of different uh, custom NASs that people build, you'd probably want to use one of those. Uh, but they do require a little bit different monitoring, and there are some trade-offs with them as well. Um, but f for you, I mean, the main decision is, do you want a little extra capacity with only one drive out uh, capability with RAID 5 or with, with just four drives? I would think you know if, if you're going to do two drive redundancy you could do raid six but that's a lot of parity calculation mm -hmm. you could just stick with raid 10. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think i was leaning toward raid 10 from my minor little investigations anyway so I, yeah. I agree raid 10 is it all right yeah so the other nice thing is if you have a cold spare hard drive if you ever have a failure uh, this nas can actually send you a text message or an email or something like that you can grab that spare and slap it in there and and that'll that be is. it so We'll do RAID 10 here. I'm going to check all the drives. We'll go to RAID 10 and uh, have them all. So it'll give you not quite 8 terabytes. It'll give you 8 tibibytes, maybe? Anyway, um, so you get 7.27 terabytes of total storage. That's quite a bit above the 2 <laughs> that we have now. A little bit of an upgrade over the 2 terabytes right now. It looks like it might be still restarting. It's, uh, it's They're all blinking like crazy, dude. We got them blinking. We have some blinking lights. So far, this has been a wonderful Windows experience. It's uh, <laughs> this is wait, we're we're over an hour updates, into this. We were going to record this last updates. little bit testing the uh, the file copy and this computer now. To, this is the second time it's doing updates. <clears throat> we are probably the only ones that ever get caught with Windows updates <laughs> taking a long time. It's, I bet everyone else gets them really fast. We have a hundred megs up and down. So it's unless Microsoft has shut off the thing or 
This is an incredible update we're all about to experience tonight. It did say that we're, you're about to get some upgrades and yeah, like it did. in a very optimistic manner. Yeah, so. it did. It made me think happy thoughts for about a half a millisecond. You gonna take the honorary bite? I will take the honorary first bite, a little strawberry in there, a little whipped cream. And uh, thank you, Ted Drews. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> mm. It's mm. actually all of the profits that we've earned on this YouTube channel are on the table right now in front of you. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're switching to this computer, which is uh, the monitor setup is definitely... It's definitely funky. A little funny. Yeah, but, a little uh, funny, gonna, a little ugly. We're going to try right. to do a file copy to that NAS. You can see yeah. it's nicely stretched out. So here's uh, File Explorer. So I, I like to go to, you know, from, to. So I'll find our NAS guy over here in uh, his network. Pops right there, hit it, and I'm going to copy this to the audio directory. I already have the audio test folder I made, so I know where to delete it. I'm going to come over here in the audio drive on this computer, drive E, audio, and I'm just going to copy this across to here. And uh, again, earlier the machines were doing 11, 10, 11 uh, megabits. So see, look at that. Come on, Jeff, we can do better. <laughs> Let's go. Wake up, everybody. The hard there they go. It's a spinning hard drive, so I yeah. think that hard drive is slowly ramping up yeah. to its full yeah. potential. Yeah, so we got uh, 10, 11, and the other, the pre and the post is here is 90s. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, I, you can, I, on, on my Mac, I could yeah. get up to 120. That was yeah. from a uh, SSD, so I'm guessing yeah. that we're hitting the limits yeah, of the so hard drive on yeah, here. Yeah, we get to 110, 100, yeah, so we're, that's a 10 times increase right there, sir. That is sweet. So everything's working, and while we were cleaning up, my dad asked a few more questions. First, he asked about notifications. Uh, notifications, when this thing goes bad, we want to be notified. Dad. Yeah, so there's a few things. Um, it actually will show a little red LED on a drive if one of them is going bad, if it has a smart status failure, or if it won't write or won't boot. Um, it also beeps, so that's nice. You know, if you're out in the office and you hear it beep, you know something is happening. And also you can set up uh, email notifications, SMS, or even push notifications with Asus Store's app, though on mine at home I just have email turned on. We also got to talking about security. At the last radio station where he worked, their entire corporate network was hit by ransomware, and that was a bit of a nightmare to fix. He wanted to make sure this NAS was protected, especially since he'd seen news about a new crypto locker called Deadbolt targeting Asus Store and QNAP. So I told him, first of all, it's always important to keep the NAS updated, just like any other device on the network. But even more important, turn off anything that you don't use. For my own NASes, I only have file sharing enabled and I run Jellyfin for media files. If I need to access the NAS remotely, I use my own VPN. Don't enable features that punch holes through your router unless it's absolutely necessary. Even then, the best protection is having an offline copy, and my dad's plan is to keep one full copy on a USB hard drive that's stored off-site and offline. Anyways, I think the storage intervention was a success. The radio station went from 11 megabytes per second to more than 100, and from 2 terabytes to 8, giving a lot more headroom for the future. Thanks to Asus Store for sending the NAS and Seagate for sending the hard drives, and we'll see you next time on Gearling Engineering.